Hello and welcome to How to See and Value Part 2. Today we're going to talk about some examples and applications. In the last video, we talked about the principles and concepts of value observation and we showed some, some of the techniques and strategies that we use in making value observations. In this video, we're going to show how I would make some value judgments from these examples and you'll hear some of my thought processes as to why I made certain decisions regarding the value. Our first example is a figure in an indoor setting. And typically in an indoor setting, there's going to be a lot of contrast. So the darks are going to go very dark and the lights will go very bright. So that's something to keep in mind when you are uh, observing or making value judgments. So the first thing we do when we make a value judgment is to squint. So like in the last video, we, we use squinting as a technique to, to lose the color information to help us ignore color information and to better see the value information. And this is what I see when I squint at this scene. Now to make uh, my value judgments, to make my first uh, two value statement, the most simple statement of dark against light, the first thing I did was I grouped all the darks in the background. So basically all the blacks of the curtain, the dark wall, and even the dark floor, I grouped it as one value shape, one black dark value shape. Then I grouped all the lights. So this included even the highlight in the hair. Now the, the highlight on the head and the white hair appear very bright, especially against a dark background. But I wanted to lower the value so that I can group them together with the light side, the flesh of the figure in light. And that includes uh, even the shorts as well. And here I made the decision to separate the feet from the shadow. Even when you squint at the scene, the feet seem very uh, dark, which they are in reality, n not nearly as bright as anywhere on the flesh, like the chest, the shorts, or the hair. But I made the conscious decision to group the feet with the light because of a pictorial reason. I want the, uh, this to, to stand out. I want the feet to stand out and be recognized as a figure standing on a surface. And finally, to make a three value statement, all I simply did was uh, add a third transitional value, basically a value that's somewhere in between the light and the dark. So somewhere in between the light of the figure and the dark of the background and the curtain. So this value uh, adds as a transition. So basically it helps us to round the forms, to model the forms, to make it feel more three-dimensional and more believable. And here I just simply added uh, the midtone at the uh, at the shorts so as it got uh, away as the figure goes away from the light source it gets darker and that's as you can see that in the shorts the shorts are much darker than the the, the chest for example and then i also added it uh, near the belly the forearms areas where it'll be uh, discolored from either blood or just as forms are turning away from light and you might also notice that i added the value as a gradient i didn't just simply add a simple black shape. It was a smooth gradient and that adds to the feeling of, of a form being rounded, of being modeled and being three-dimensional. So gradients can be powerful as value statements but as also as form statements. Our next example is a portrait and this is a portrait bust. It's a sculpture by Bernini. Now when we want to make a value judgment First thing we want to do is to squint. So this is what I see when I squint at the scene. Remember, squinting is a technique we use to, to ignore, help us ignore the color information. Now, when I want to make a two value statement, the most simple value statement you can make, value judgment, is two values, light and dark. So here, all I did to make a two value statement was I first grouped all of the darks in the background and that included the cast shadow against the wall. Then I grouped uh, the shadow, the cast shadow on the chin and the neck with the, the value of the wall, grouped them all together. And then as far as the lights go, I grouped all the lights together and that included the shirt. Now when you squint at the scene, the shirt is obviously darker 
than the flesh, especially when you look at the forehead and the hair in light, closer to the light. It's much darker than that. But I wanted to group it with the lights, uh, again, as, as a pictorial reason to create a, a nice, elegant shape that has an instant read as to what this object is, this subject is. So that was my reasoning for grouping the shirt in the light. And finally, to make a three-value statement, I kept the same idea of our two value statement, the same shapes, but I added a third light value. And here the light value is near the top of the form at the forehead and the hair, and that's the area closest to the light. So this third value, this light value, the addition of this third value helps us to model form and it helps us to show the direction of the light that's casting on this form, which adds to the feeling of three-dimensional space and depth. And finally we have a still life and the still life is uh, the classic dark objects against a light background. So the first thing you want to do is to squint. So this is what I see when I squint at the scene and right away you can see just how dark these uh, foreground objects such as the bottle and the barrel look against the light of the background. That contrast is very sharp. And we're going to use that contrast in our two-value idea. So to make the most simple two-value statement, simple two-value idea, all I did was group all of the foreground, the bottles, the barrel, the wine and the glass, all in one shape, one dark shape, one dark value to make our two-value statement. And everything in the background, including the gradient, was grouped into one light value for the background. So that's our simple two-value statement. And finally, to make a three value statement, all I did was add a third midtone value, and the midtone value was added to the background to help us uh, match closer to the mood and value structure of our original reference. Then I separated uh, the bright objects in the foreground, such as the cheese and the grapes, and this really adds uh, a third layer of depth, of dimension. Then finally, I added uh, the light back the light value back into the background behind the bottles and what this does is that it not only separates helps separate the bottles from the background but i added it as a gradient as you can see it's a smooth gradient going from light the light value to the midtone value of the background and this gradient not only helps us separate it value wise but creates greater complexity and sophistication because we use the gradient so that's uh, another way that gradients uh, can be a powerful way to make value statements. Okay, I want to thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to demonstrate how to do tonal composition studies. Basically, how to do little drawings, little value breakdowns based on value observations. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, if you want more videos, more lectures, and more exclusive content, like the text version of this video, all you gotta do is go to the website. That's www.freshdesigner.com. And if you like this video, if you learn anything from this video, or if you're going to apply some of these concepts, please leave a comment below or join us on the website and share your work and comments there. So that's it for now. Until next time, get out there, keep drawing, and build up your mileage. Bye for now.